Alright, what's up guys to this new video. Today we're gonna be reviewing the dwarves, a basic guide to how to play the dwarves, how to have some success with them, what are the general strategies, what's the meta game at the start. So one of the most important things in Azure Wars is like the twenty first seconds. So I'm basically gonna play them to show you what I do in my first 20 seconds and that applies to a lot of races as you're gonna see but let's see so Glamoran is under attack uh, build a tram run and your steam tanks uh, after black temple is destroyed you can allow yourself with the dwarves imperial quarter and alliance nation you can liberate Gilnes. so basically what we want to do is to the left of iron forge you can see a bit of snow there at the bottom left there's a city called gnomerang so we're gonna try and defeat it as soon as possible all right so I'll show you over here now first of all we're gonna select all the units over here and we're gonna attack move over here and, and for some reason the padding was weird there gonna select over here attack move select those here tell them to go to him all right over here what we're gonna do this is depending on your choice. I go for the Stormhammer and here's why. I'm gonna focus everything on this Warlord and as soon as he dies I'm gonna have the support of the Gnomerang. I'm gonna liberate the city. Now what you want to do is select all your you, your buildings that you're gonna be using to produce unit. So here I just cleaned up these trolls. Alright. Then you're gonna be moving and you're gonna be creeping the rest of uh, these peasants weren't supposed to be selected So you basically creep and there we go. Let's say this is the first like the first turn and we'll stop here So this gives you an idea as soon as the game starts here. I have all my All my buildings that I want to produce unique with my barracks. I forgot actually I forgot one. I forgot this machine shop All right, so now what you want to do so you start with iron forge you start with Talsmar with a little highland over here, which is Menethil and two heroes, Muradin and King Magni. So, right from the start, you want to kill, you, you want to focus the big troll warlord so you can unlock um, Gnomerang and the towers will help you kill the rest of the trolls. That's a small optimization. Alright, uh, uh, for your spells, uh, Muradin is usually basically straightforward. You want to get your stun. And the other is a choice. If you are good in buying mana potions, you can get his activate. That's basically like gives him lifesteal and bonus damage. So you get that skill and you use your shops, which are over here, to buy mana potions and make sure that he always has mana. If not, I recommend getting attribute bonus, um, especially if you lose your heroes a lot, it will help a bit to keep him alive. So I like having attribute bonus if you're a starting player. If not, um, Stormhammer is okay. It gets better with levels, but at the start it's not very good, so I usually don't get it. For King Magni, there's a more of a choice. I personally like Stormbolt and Earth Grace because I will use Mana Potion and Stormbolt is the best tool you have as Dwarf to aim heroes. It's really good because it's it's a long stun and combined with the stun here of Muradin and the Dwarf, I will we'll go to them later, the Riflemen, they have something that reduces that reduces armor. It's a very good combination to, to target down heroes. So I like Stormbolt and all, as always you need your heal and the only dwarf heal is this one, Hurt Grace. It's basically, as you see here, it's like the alchemist here. Some players go for the attack speed, I personally don't because I I don't know, I, I, I prefer having spells to cast but that's your choice. If you're a new player, I recommend going for one of the spells and the aura. Um, don't get stats on Magni, I don't know why you would, but hey, that's a choice you have. Alright, so once you have conquered your land, and now I'm gonna do, I see dead people. So, once you have creeped over here, you're gonna want to take this point, which is Dunmore Door, and then you want to creep um, Grim Battle area. So here's a little tip, all of these guys have, except here, and all of these guys have heavy armor and these ones too so what you want to do I'm gonna speed this process up I what I usually do 
is you want to use griffins because griffins are really powerful. So here's my griffins and I have one more over here. So have your griffin squad on some odd key usually. I have my uh, number 4 odd key. I have number 3 is elites and heroes. Number 1 is your buildings. Number 9 will be your upgrades. So what you do is you take all you search for your blacksmith now for the dwarf you got one here and one in ironforge number nine so you can start on your upgrades okay so here are my dwarf and let's see how they have no upgrades and they're pretty damn so lightning this and focus them on the big guy to start you want to uh, I fell here but you want to be microing the one that's getting targeted by the big guy all right and there we go that's Valestra's down that's 60 gold and I am I'm not a, I'm not doing very good guys but usually you can clear up this camp with um, four or five Griffins remaining the, uh, so that wasn't that wasn't the best but once you clear these guys you can get these ones pretty much for free. You just target the Dark Shaman here. One volley. And there we go. And the rest, they're gonna get them eventually. And after, you can get these ogres. So that clears out. And then you can send some warriors. Um, these guys and just get the points. So you do like shift order. Gonna do here. And shift order here. There we go. So one here, one here, and they should clear out. And then you, you just farm with your griffins. As soon as you need them, you can bring them back. All right. So what happens once you have... So you you can re reassemble your army over here. And there's two strategies from here. Make sure... Uh, here, here's the tank. Make sure to have all at least four riflemen in it. Because it's really powerful when it's loaded up. So... Once you're here, you want for sure to control this point and try and get this point. So, and creep these creeps here. So you you got, and there's very important, there's a goblin merchant over here if you need. So, uh, what? Uh, prefer not losing a hero. Okay, so you have a bunch of creeps here to get. That's free gold, free experience, pretty good. And there we go, I, <laughs> I lost my hero. All right, whatever. It's not important. I'm basically like showing you guys stuff. I'm not playing. So, you want to be creeping over here. And then you want to be pushing over here to take this point and black rock. So, white yellow is in my opinion the easiest race to start with is because it's pretty straightforward where you have to fight it's over here and sometimes you're gonna do the long crossing over here you're gonna be attacking from swamp behind teal but i don't recommend it but because if you do that it's very easy for teal to just spam grunts over here and just decimate this base with spam grunts and if teal starts spamming grunts and your army is far away you're gonna lose like um, dwarves are n are not gonna win versus a teal spam army like if you compare the stats like 18 to 22 715 to armor look at this chaos damage they have blood loss they have more HP they probably ha will have more upgrades than you at that point and if not they're gonna be at least the same upgrades than you so if teal starts spamming you're gonna lose the spam war so I usually recommend get this point and leave some units like I would send some units over here to harass this point because teal will be massed over here and pushing over here so if you have a couple of units over here and poking at him he'll always be like moving back but he doesn't want to commit over here especially if he's fighting dark green because if he goes over here dark green just comes behind him and you come the other way and if you time it right you're gonna trap him and clear his army so usually what's dark uh, teal gonna do is he's gonna try and hold here while he pushes over here with his main force so your job as yellow is to break this and um some ways to do it so a few strategies first of all using the griffins you can target um these towers because if you notice these ones have heavy armor so these 
three, four watchtowers are all very vulnerable to griffins. And as soon as you start using the griffins and fellow boros too, by the way. So all of these buildings are have heavy armor. They're really, really easy to target with griffins. So you use your griffins to start destroying these towers. And once, once you've dealt at least these two, you can start pushing. Second of all, you need mortars. Mortars to focus this boulder tower and to start destroying the, the infrastructure. But not too much mortars. I s it depends on the yellow player. I usually don't get them all because um, Teal will have a... Yes, he has casters, but... Um, these fellow guys have medium armor and these necrolites, they're the only one who have an armored and that are countered by mortars. And um, orcs and cavalry, grunts and cavalry have heavy armor and these ones have a lot of armor. So the, um, the mortars are not that efficient versus them. So I usually get a couple of mortar and start targeting on the buildings and using the griffins to kill the um, towers and focus units and heroes. One thing the way the griffin is dispelled is really good to burst down a hero. Six of them, that's like 75 times six, that's uh, 900 damage reduced by heavy uh, hero armor. That's like 600 damage more or less, which is really good. Like that's a really good nuke on a, on a hero. So if you storm storm ball with King Dead Manini, then you seismic lamb, then you lightning bolt. That's a pretty good hero aim. So. Another way to push this is to use your caster unit, which is over here, the engineer. So the engineer has lockdown, which is basically a super long stun versus buildings, and he has dispel. So if you go the engineer route, you're gonna be countering the towers instead of um, using mortars or griffin, and you can dispel the buffs and the and the um, the skeletons of teal. That's very good if a teal is gonna be spamming a lot of skeletons. Um, finally, I don't use overclock. Uh, we need to change these spells because they're pretty outdated, to be honest. But engineers are pretty good, and they have they attack very slowly, but they have a good damage, so they're not a bad unit per se. For a caster, they have pretty good stats. All right, another strategy, and this one requires tiers. So let's go over the tiers right now. Oh, um, last strategy is going tanks. Tanks are super expensive, but they're very, very powerful. If you put four riflemen in them, they're basically like gonna fire a lot. They have a lot of AOE. They're pretty good for killing for killing an army that Teal is not looking at it. Because if he has a big spam of army, you're just gonna be focusing down with your big AOE, like big cannons, boom, and then flamethrowers and all your riflemen are going to be fired. So. These team tanks are pretty good and they're really tanky, so you put them in front and they're gonna absorb a lot of damage. Alright, so over here are the tiers. Uh, there's two tiers, they're in the Imperial Court over here. One is the Freya Stormwork, increase the attack damage of all Dwarven Unique, unless cuddled on mortar teams, which I'm not sure what it is, because uh, I don't get this tier a lot. Uh, scuttle? Whatever. I'm, I'm not sure what it is. Improve Flak Cannon, Mitral Armor, increase the amount by Tavern. But here is the one that pretty much everyone will get, an ex Expedition of Fire. Why? Increase movement speed of all Dwarven unit by 20%, which is good. Movement speed is a good stat. But armor penetration round on riflemen is really strong. That's really, really good. So b most people will get this one. Alright. So one of the strategies is start researching this one from the start and then get the Explorer League. And what this will give you is the Explorers, who are a really, really strong unit. Um, I'll show you now as soon as this is complete. So, Explorers. So, why are these guys strong? So, their stats seem to suck. But they have two really good stuff. For one, they have um, magic damage. So, a really good combination is a bunch of riflemen with the with the uh, armor penetrating and a bunch of explorers and they're gonna be they're gonna be um, destroying the grunts the front line of teal and they they are they have the long rifle so they can be upgraded with range so they're gonna be destroying the front line of teal because they have magic damage coupled with the reduction armor of the rifleman it's a very good um, it's a very good squad of units so and Again, another thing, they have a kneeling ward. So each of them has a kneeling ward that lasts 30 seconds and is at, has a fairly long cooldown. As you can see, I think it's two minutes, something like that. It's really, really long. 
So let's see, it's turn 15. Uh, it's gonna be long. So, uh, uh, Explorer and Rifleman army is pretty good. And as always, as most of the teams, you want to have your elites. So the Dwarven Elite is the Thane over here. The Thane is an heavy melee unit. And they're very tanky and they have very powerful spell. They actually have the best tanking spell in the whole game. Activate Perfect Avatar. It's basically, they become... It's like... <laughs> it's like Divine Shield. But units still attack them. That's... It's completely overpowered. So here. Let's say your front line is attacking. You, you stunt and then boom. And there you go. You don't... You don't take you take one damage from every unit. It's completely busted. Like it's so powerful. So with these guys and they have a self heal, they have taunt, they have bash, resistance skin, perfect avatar. They're really good frontline. So using them, plus healing wards over here, and maybe you have some engineers. And actually, engineers don't get upgraded by long barrel, which is a shame they should. So engineers that dispel. That's a pretty good composition over here. Another composition is the more balanced one. Uh, there's the Griffin one, but you need to be careful because if you want to go Griffins, you usually need Storm Hammers, which is really good. And if you go Griffins, I usually get the Elemental Mastery because the Chain Lightning that they get, it seems expensive, but the Chain Lightning does so much damage here. I'll show you in a second. All right. Uh, the other Masteries, I'll go over them fast. Uh, Siege Masteries. Increase damage by 15 done to mortar te by mortar teams and flying machines and still siege tank gains the reaper crew ability. ability. If you want to get siege tank it's really good because the reaper crew heals like a thousand HP something like that so it makes them really tanky. The fortification right now no, not a lot of people take it but it will be useful. So increase all non capitan building health by 300 and armor by 1. Keep towers gain for armor blah 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 basically you gain a lot of towers. And elemental mastery finally so griffins 200 sp good and greatly improved griffin rider chain lightning so let's see remember the chain lightning current dealt 75 damage so let's see where it gets now elemental mastery 85 so that's 10 damage more but it jumps eight time each deal five percent damage less before the Griffin's dealt 75 damage, it reduced by 15% and it dealt 15 damage less. So with this, you can basically arrive. Let's let's try. Let's let's just cast a bunch. Oh, oh I'll see you how you aim tower. So you get here, and then two two shot and it's down. So here, look at the damage, like. And I probably, I could have targeted more units. So yeah, I like my Griffins. I, I very much enjoy Griffins. They're really good for just arriving. And like that's, a, in an army that's really good damage. Especially if you're focusing the hero, that's really good. So that's the pretty much. Um, another detail I forgot here is Belgun. He basically has a big dispel and he's your demi hero and he also has flare. So try not to lose him because his dispel is very really useful, especially if you didn't go for dwarven engineers. All right. So this is oh, and here's Bran. He comes with tears. So this is basically the start of the game. Once you destroyed Blackrock, what I usually do is send a couple of guys over here. But if you don't see any resistance from Teal, try and go help Dark Green. Because at this point, any decent Teal will be already pushed out over here. Or close to. Always keep an eye on the flank because you don't want him rushing a bunch of units over here. And what you, you will usually see is eventually the Dwarf player will build a Lumber Mill over here. And st at least... Get some Riflemen in the tower, maybe upgrade this one, it's pretty expensive, but um, Cannon Tower is less expensive and it's it's useful versus Grunts. Like the upgraded Cannon Tower has a shit ton of damage versus Grunt, look at this. That's so much damage in an AoE, so like if they're starting to come here, you just focus down there. And whoops. <laughs> so it's gonna be very powerful in this one, of course it's lightning speed. So... 
the, this is a is an easy little concave you can do to protect this place from teal spam and it's very useful because if not you're gonna be losing all your base and then all your territory is open you're gonna have uh, teal over here over here at grim battle he's gonna be spamming and you're gonna lose the spam war as I said earlier you're gonna lose the spam war also never forget to get your upgrades which I did because I was explaining other stuff but you always want to be maybe not always but you want to get at least the attack the armor is way less important because a lot of teal stuff has chaos damage chaos damage chaos damage chaos damage so you don't want armor upgrade versus chaos damage it's not that useful but the damage upgrade is very important because you have most of the range unit of sa so this is the start for yellow of course the strategies will depend on what teal can do teal has a lot of available strategies well a lot he can he he has a lot of passive attack he can be really sneaky so it all depends on you you got to adapt and how you do f to adapt is you just play more you need to play a lot of azeroth wars to get better at it it goes without saying all right and finally just uh, you need to remember where the shops are so the shop is over here very useful and there's another one over here so these are your goblin merchant usually they're interesting, they have Skull of Healing, which are a bit more expensive than the one in your shop, but they, they're both useful. And also these ones, I think these ones are instant, yeah, Skull of Healings are instant, while Skull of Regeneration are over time, so... Very useful, never forget, never forget them. Potions are good for your heroes, especially the mana potion, because Dwarven heroes don't have a lot of mana. And that's it. Um, one... Uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to do. Oh, yeah, but I guess I can mention the units I didn't talk about. So there's the flying machine. Uh, flying machine, I don't recommend them early. Uh, they have nothing really good versus what Teal has. So, I mean, Teal is not going to be massing air units really. And if he does, even so, your riflemen are better than your flying machine. They have true sight, but you have usually flare on your mortars that you roll research, so it's really not expensive. And the other unit I didn't really talk about is the warrior, but like the warrior is pretty standard. If you want, you can get the mitral armor. Uh, it's really up to you. I don't usually don't get it because I prefer a, a front line of thanes. So I don't usually get a lot of dwarf warriors. They're not my unit. I like tanks or thanes. So that's pretty much it. You can you can experiment with the other steers, um, especially the uh, the tinkers, I guess. But I really prefer the penetration round and explorer route. It's really good because it gives you really strong uh, range force. That you, if you use a choke point, you're really, really, really strong. Also, a good idea is to complete the deep charm run. Uh, it's in your the great forge over here. It's a little expensive, 150 gold, but it's really good to to reinforce fast your units and also you can surprise teal sometimes like you can bring an army over here behind so uh, it it opens up possibilities and also if you f lost this and teal is going in your base sometimes you're gonna be fighting over here and then you can retreat over here faster i mean it opens up possibilities so it's not out of the question um so i i usually get it around sometimes in the duel once once teal is driven in the outland he doesn't have black rock and you got are camping here with teal you can take your time because you basically you basically you're winning like if you manage to hold off teal in outland you got more income than him so eventually you'll become stronger so no need to rush it what's important is the beginning uh, black rock is dividing you you need to win this one don't forget there's a base inside the mountain over here the teleporter once this is dealt with and you have reunited with dark green the path to victory should be yours so i really hope you enjoyed this guide if there's anything uh, some better players have to add like zoom or titan retarded whatever if you guys have anything to add feel free to tell in the comments below and um, just tell me if there's some if there's some race you want me to do next if not i'm probably gonna do um I'm probably gonna do dark green, I guess. Just because, like, we already talked about the southeastern duel, we already talked about yellow, so let's go for dark green. 
Alright. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and see you guys next time.